but being informed through the mystery of his will, he has made us heirs of his riches and predestined us to greatness and sealed us with the day to the day of redemption. Now these nine things, y'all, don't forget. I said it's 730, 930, I'm saying to you, don't forget them this year because you're going to need them in this particular time as you prepare to give birth. My brothers and sisters, what a foundation that we can have that we can already on the first part of the year, for the first part of the year, be able to tell somebody that I'm going to win anyhow, that I'm not going to lose. All right, all right. Will y'all help me preach? Tell somebody I'm going to win this year. Y'all not saying it. Say, I'm going to make this year count. I'm going to win. See, it is our mandate to take this year by the horns and begin to start walking in victory. Now, stop allowing people to make you think that you're less than you really are. That's right. That's they right. don't appreciate your value. Move on to somebody that's else right, that appreciates right. you for you. No longer allow people to determine or dictate your Wait, destiny. Don't allow people to control your strings. You're not a puppet, and you got to do what that's everybody right, tells you to right. do. And can I talk to y'all like I want to talk? Bishop. Stop allowing the things that, uh, uh, that you don't have to deal with uh, that, that are beneath you uh, stay and climb up where you are. Stay on top of stuff. Sometimes you have to just go ahead and get it out and get over it That's and say, right. look, okay, we ain't, I ain't finna carry this all year long. There's some stuff we need to deal with. Let's deal with it so we can go on and take care of the kingdom. And uh, those, some of the things that we dealt with last year, I think I got 10 members that will say, I ain't tolerated this year. Right, I'm going right. where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated. Anybody don't want me, I don't want them. Right. Anybody don't want to talk to me, I ain't losing no sleep over. Right. I talk to myself if I have to. Y'all don't want to talk here. God is preparing us to move from this immature stuff and y'all uh, having pity parties over who and what's going on. Just go pull yourself together and say, self, me and you going to have a good time because right, God preserved me for this. Ain't no sense in God allowing me to get through 08 and here I am in 09 and I can't claim that things are going to be fine and divine. I am blessed by the best, too blessed to be stressed. And don't dump your negativity on me. I ain't got time for gossip. I ain't got time for them stupid forwards you sent on the email. I ain't got time for all that crazy stuff. I want God okay. to do something special for me. On, Somebody let's say, God, do it for God, me. It for We're me. building a great foundation. So rich a foundation, a so sure promise. But I, how you gonna do that in the graveyard? Blessed by Bishop, but I'm in the graveyard. Chosen, but in the graveyard. Adopted, but in the graveyard. Accepted among the brethren, but in the graveyard. Redeemed, but in the graveyard. Predestinated, but in the graveyard. Saved, but in the graveyard. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Still dealing with the graveyard. Sealed with the, sealed with the spirit of the graveyard. It's like this. Have you, ever, uh, have you ever knew that you were well and still felt sick? No. Okay. Tell somebody, graveyard problem. Graveyard problem. H have you ever knew that, you're, that you were in your right mind but still couldn't remember what you was getting yes, ready to do? Yes, yes. Or who you was getting ready to call? Yes, or yes. Who you called? I wish I had some honest folks. Come on, come or on. Or where you put your keys. Or, or, yes. What store was you going to? Y'all ever have blanks like that? Graveyard problems. Problem as I see it is a movement or the lack thereof. It's called procrastination. I dare not call it incarceration. You see, my brothers and sisters, in chapter one, he tells us of what he has done for us. Uh, but uh, and, and uh, at least nine things that you can be sure of. But now we get to chapter two. It is our part uh, to walk in those things that he told us to do, to come out. The movement is now placed upon us. Graveyards are made for three groups of people. Uh, number one is the dead, those that are there for their temporary resting before mortal is turned into immortality. The second group of people, the graveyards are for, are for people like myself. I'm dressed today as a gravekeeper to ah. keep it clean, to adorn uh, the grave, to dig the graves, to put the plants, to wipe off uh, the tombstones. That's the second group. The third group are for those of us that stop by uh, frequently or occasionally or regularly to mourn or remember or pay tribute to the loss of somebody in their life. But I want you to know that any moment of sadness and discouragement is, was never designed to be permanent. God wants you to be happy. I wish I could try that again. I say God wants you to have a little joy. This is not a permanent place. 
The graveyard is not a permanent place because the Bible said that when Jesus comes, just like on Calvary, the dead going to get out their graves so there won't be no graves. The people who had the job like I have now today, I won't need that job because there won't be no cemetery. And we who walk by it, visit it, hang out in it, will never gain control of any other season if we spend too much time yes, with dead yes. things. I just got an email from heaven. Yes. One of the problems already in 09 is that some of y'all been spending too much time with dead things. Help me preach. Ask somebody, have you spent too much time with dead things? Yes, got to look at this. Because Paul here has described, you know it's dead, it ain't exciting, it's got to be dead. It ain't breathing, it ain't pushing you, it ain't growing you, it ain't stretching you. It's dead. Let dead stuff be dead. Pronounce the benediction on it. Tell it ashes be ashes and dust be dust. Paul writes here and talks about our spiritual possessions in Christ, but he turns to the second truth. After the possession, now we're talking about positions, from possessions to position. We are positioned differently in Christ now. I'm having my own self a revival. Come on, come on, First he explained what God has done for us, all the sinners in general. Then he explained what God did for everyone, Gentiles in particular. The person, man, woman, boy, girl, who accepts Christ uh, has been raised uh, into a different place. He is, uh, he is raised and seated on the throne. And believers, Jews and Gentiles, uh, then when we're, when we're reconciled, we are set uh, into the temple. We'll be in the tabernacle Tuesday. Please don't miss it. What a miracle of God's grace. We have been given permission to leave the graveyard of sin and to be placed in the throne room of glory. Yes. We are now in 09, the year of birthing. Somebody else confirmed that. We're going to give birth. And the lady said the other night in Detroit that we have to be very careful these first three months because you're in that first trimester and in that first trimester and burning that and carrying that child. I got to be careful what you say, who you hang around, what you eat. Somebody's going to give birth to some stuff. Y'all about to help make me crack here. I feel God. Yes, but I said to come the on, people on, in Greensboro this week, I said, you know, it's a continuation in a lot of ways of 07 and 08 because God cannot be bound by one year. So just because it's 09 don't mean God can't complete some stuff. And just because 08 is over and it's 09 does not mean God cannot give you a new beginning. He continues to bless us. He never stops. Right, he chooses right. yes, to give us yes. what he wants us to give. I just believe the process is going to include uh, unity. We've got to come together. Maturity, you've got to stop being a baby and yes, grow up. Yes, and yes. then we'll be ready to give birth. The graveyard for some is that chance you've been waiting for to get something you seem like you couldn't get. The graveyard for some is the addiction to dead things and places that you need to move away from. The graveyard for some is a, a lack of zeal and the ability to move forward. The graveyard for some is a loss of purpose, a loss of drive, a loss of passion. The graveyard for some is a saddened yesterday filled with contempt, contradictions, and every pain that won't go away. The graveyard for most of us is that thing that's hindering us to get to our destiny. The graveyard for some of us is that pity party that we love going to because we feel better when we're around folk that's sad like we're sad. The graveyard for some is that long waited for thing that should have gone away by now. The come graveyard on, for on. some is that opportunity to expand yourself that you missed. The graveyard for some is not following Christ to the point of total freedom and delivery. The graveyard for some is that wound that won't heal uh, and people continue to pour salt on it. I'm trying my best to preach. Somebody tell me to preach please. Yes, yes, yes. Graveyard for some is those things that we don't want to be a part of. The graveyard for some is the wickedness of our past uh, that we've been delivered from, but we have not forgiven our own selves uh, for stuff that we did in the past. The graveyard for some is a lack of joy because we missed a season and we're still in the night when the Bible said joy is coming in the morning and you have the power and the authority. I'll get to that to make this night your morning. Here, yeah, tell your neighbor I got some joy coming. The graveyard for some is where you lay still and don't know what to do. The graveyard for some is gloomy and dark graveyard for some is a lost hope that you gave upon buried and it's somewhere under the sod under the flowers under the tombstone I preach today amidst a graveyard 
tombstones around me. I got on my grave clothes. Uh, the red, the dead are in control. Sadness permeates me. The tears of sadness is watering the flowers in my graveyard. I have tombstones. None of y'all names are on them because I didn't want you to think it was prophetic, but they represent deadness. Gloom abides. It's